We're going to look at extraction of metals at National 5 chemistry level today and these notes will be in pages 74 and 75 of the bright red book. These are the SQA learning outcomes we're going to cover today. I'm not, these are all the ones for the extraction of metals but we're only going to cover the first half of them. Electrolysis will be covered in another lesson. Metals such as gold and silver occur what we call uncombined on earth, i.e. they're not joined to oxygen and other elements. And this is because they're very unreactive elements. And because of this, these elements were the first to be discovered. So you can see that the ancient Greeks worked with gold as well as the Incas in South America. So ancient civilizations worked with gold because it was easy to extract. Um, these elements are unreactive and shiny because they don't react with oxygen over time. If something reacts with oxygen, it tends to dull its color over time. This is a gold rush in the 1860s. It looks as if it could be somewhere like America, but this was closer to home. This was at Ballinor in 1869. That was the gold rush at Kildondon Burn near Helmsdale. And you can still go gold panning at Helmsdale for nuggets of pure gold because gold is very unreactive. So gold is desirable for use if you want a shiny metal that won't react with oxygen in the air. So here's a golden dome in Jerusalem, for instance, but if you wanted gold plated statues or gold jewellery, they will tend to stay shiny. So various metals tend to be found in rocks joined to various elements such as oxygen and sulphur and carbon. Most metals are found in the ground combined with other elements in the form ionic compounds such as copper oxide or iron oxide and these compounds are called ores. An ore is a naturally occurring compound found in rocks or underground. So for instance the ore hematite contains iron, bauxite contains aluminium and these are other ones that can contain lead, mercury or copper. Here's some examples of ores as well. Here's hematite. You notice it's got a, um, a reddish brown colour um, and that's due to the iron um, ions given this kind of red colour, just like in our blood that we've got just now. So the difficult part is extracting the metal from these rocks. And we're going to go through the methods of how to do this. When metals are extracted from ores, what happens is that metal ions are reduced, i.e. they gain electrons in a reduction reaction to form metal atoms. So this is malachite, uh, ore containing the ionic compound copper carbonate. What happens is that it contains copper ions and these gain electrons to form copper atoms, which give you this shiny brown color typical of copper metal. So when metals are extracted from ores, metal ions are reduced forming metal atoms, i.e. copper ions, which are present in the ore, gain electrons to form copper atoms. So extracting metals from ores is an example of a reduction reaction, i.e. we have a gain of electrons by the reactant, which is typically a metal ion, to form metal atoms. The method used to extract a metal from its ore will depend on its position in the reactivity series. So this is the order of reactivity starting from the most reactive metals alkali metals like potassium, sodium, lithium, right down to your unreactive metals such as mercury, silver and gold. And these ones are fairly reactive and these require different methods of extraction to get them out. So your ones that don't react with oxygen, it's quite easy to get the oxygen off them. They're easiest to extract. But your very reactive metals, which were only discovered relatively recently, like potassium, sodium, lithium, they're hardest to extract because they're very reactive and very tightly bound to the oxygen and other elements present in its ore. For fairly unreactive metals such as gold, silver, mercury, heat alone is required to extract the metal. So gold, silver, mercury may react with oxygen very slowly and tarnish a little bit, but a little bit of heat will extract the metal. So here's an example of silver oxide, which is an ionic compound. If we heat that, we can break up that silver oxide ionic compound into its elements, silver and oxygen. Note that we've got silver ions on this side and silver atoms on this side. So this is an example of a reduction reaction.
because we're getting a gain of electrons. We're going having metal ions gaining electrons. You can see the electrons are on the left hand side to form metal atoms. For more reactive metals such as copper, tin, lead, iron and zinc, heat alone is not enough to extract the metal. If I was to take a copper ore which contains copper oxide and I heated it, I would not break that up into its metal atoms. I need to add something else to get that reaction to occur to break up that ionic compound. The method used to extract copper from various ores is by heating with carbon. Carbon can exist as charcoal or a form called coke that comes from coal. So if you take copper two oxide and you heat it with carbon, the carbon is more reactive than the copper and will snatch off that oxygen from the copper, which will produce copper plus carbon dioxide. So the carbon removes the oxygen from the ore to form carbon dioxide. So here's the equation here. If we have copper oxide in an ionic compound, the carbon, as I mentioned, will snatch off that oxygen atom. And if with a bit of heat, we'll end up with pure copper metal plus CO2. And again, this is an example of a reduction reaction. Those copper ions are gaining electrons to form copper metal. Okay, this is a little home experiment I'm going to try in which I'm going to try and extract the iron from the iron oxide. Now, iron oxide has got the formula Fe2O3. So basically it's got, um, get this right, three plus, two three plus ions and three O2 negative ions. When iron is an, in an ionic compound, when it's um, not in the form of atoms, it loses its magnetic property. So the iron in this compound or this ore is not magnetic. You can see nothing moves when I put this magnet beneath it. So what I'm going to try and do is extract the iron using heating, although heat alone won't do it, but I'm going to heat, um, heating alone will only work for silver, gold and mercury. I'm going to use carbon and a readily available source of carbon is in this match. So I'm going to try and isolate it using carbon. The carbon from this match is going to try and snatch the oxygen off this compound. So I'm going to get pure iron. Okay, so this is our match with carbon in it. And I've coated it with a little bit of sodium carbonate, which helps the iron and the carbon come together. So I'm going to moisten this with a little bit of water and roll it around into the iron oxide in this dish here too much of it and then I'm going to heat burn it in a candle I'm going to use heat for this I'm going to allow that candle to burn until about half of its length so as I speak what should be happening is the carbon present in the match is snatching the oxygen off of the iron oxide Hopefully I'm not going to set off the smoke alarm in my house here as I do this. Okay, so that flame's virtually gone out, so I'm going to let that cool. And then I'm going to press this into a weigh boat next. Okay, so here's my reaction here. It's had iron oxide, remember, plus carbon. I'm going to crush this here into this dish. And if the reactions worked, I might detect some iron. So let's put a magnet underneath it. I don't know if you can see, but there's some fragments of pure iron metal moving with the magnet. So we have isolated some of the iron using the carbon from the match. You can see that there's definitely a piece moving there as well. So to summarize, what's happened is I've taken the iron oxide reacted it with carbon and what we've done is we've created pure iron which we saw as magnetic iron inside there 
and I would have produced carbon dioxide as the carbon took the oxygen off of the iron. So in the video you just saw, you saw a simple method in which iron could be extracted from iron oxide. And what I did was I took the iron oxide and added carbon from a match and the carbon snatched off the oxygen from the iron to form magnetic iron plus carbon dioxide. This is the balanced equation for the reaction. The thing to note is that carbon is more reactive than iron. The iron oxide is reduced, i.e. broken up from metal ions to metal atoms by the carbon, i.e. the oxygen is removed to form the metallic iron. Iron can be extracted from its ore in industry using a process called the blast furnace. The blast furnace involves these materials. We've got iron ore, limestone, and a form of carbon called coke. This all gets fed into a big hot furnace with lots of oxygen going in. And what happens is the carbon in there reacts with the oxygen to form CO2. The CO2 then reacts with a bit more carbon to form, and you can see carbon monoxide. And the carbon monoxide will react with iron oxide to form iron metal, which kind of goes down, down into here as molten iron, plus CO2. So the difference between the method that I use compared to the method that is used in industry is that carbon monoxide is used to snatch away the oxygen off the iron. So to summarize for the extraction of iron from iron oxide, carbon monoxide rather than carbon is generally used to remove the oxygen from the iron oxide. For more reactive metals such as copper, tin, lead, iron and zinc, heating with carbon, for instance, as we saw with copper, or carbon monoxide, as we saw in the blast furnace process with iron, is enough to extract the metal. So to summarize, heating alone will allow you to extract mercury, silver and gold from its ore, but it will not allow you to extract more reactive metals such as zinc, iron, lead, copper and alkali metals. To extract zinc, iron, tin, lead and copper, heating with carbon or carbon monoxide will allow the metal to be extracted from the ore. These more reactive ones we'll look at later need to be extracted via a process called electrolysis. So here's an example of a past paper question. Which of the following metals can be extracted from its oxide by heat alone? So if you take a note of what we looked at, the correct answer should be gold because gold is very unreactive. Heat alone will get the oxygen off of any gold. These zinc and iron will require carbon. And as we'll see later on, aluminium will require a technique called electrolysis. So these are the learned outcomes covered today. During the extraction of metals, metal ions, like an ionic compound, are reduced in a reduction reaction to form metal atoms. And the method used for extraction depends its position in the series. And you can need to be able to recognize an um, equation shown in the extraction. So the methods we looked at today were heat alone for the extraction of silver, gold and mercury, or heating with carbon or carbon monoxide for the extraction of copper, lead, tin, iron and zinc.